Hey everyone, Joey here. And today we are going to be setting up Switch emulation on Android. First up, you'll need to have backed up your games, updates, DLC, and firmware from your actual Switch. This is only possible with a modded Switch, which you can then use a program called NX Dump Tool to back up your games. You're also going to need Switch firmware and prod keys, and you can use lockpick underscore RCM to grab the keys from your Switch. And you can use Switch firmware dumper to dump your firmware from your Switch. The internet can help you on all of this, but I cannot. Now with all of that ready, you are going to have files for base games, updates, and DLC. And you're going to want to combine them into one XCI file. There is a few reasons you want to do this. Number one, you can have one single file that has your base game, your updates, and DLC all in it. But also, you can then store this on an SD card. Whereas if you don't, what happens is the base game can be on the SD card, but updates and DLC will install to your internal storage. And that can take up a lot of space, especially on 128 gigabyte devices that maybe just don't have a lot of space to begin with. So you can use a program called SAK for Switch Army Knife to combine your game, update, and DLC into one file. You're going to want to first convert your base game from NSP to XCI if it isn't already. Then you can choose Update XCI and merge in your updates and DLC. Once that's all done, you're going to have one XCI file that has your base game, your updates, and your DLC. I personally like to create a Switch folder on my SD card in a folder called ROMs, and I keep everything nice and tidy inside of that but it is up to you on where and how you want to store your games. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna be using Eden in today's video. So let's head to their website. It's also linked in the description. Go ahead and choose download and then download under Android. Scroll down and under builds, then Android, you're gonna see three options as of today. There is standard, optimized and legacy. This is fairly self-explanatory. They tell you what each is for. Optimize is if your device has frame generation. Legacy is for older GPUs. And standard is if you have no idea and you just want to play. I'm going to be going with standard here. Open that APK to install the emulator. And then let's run through setup. Choose get started. Then grant permissions for notifications. Now we have to select our prod keys file which we grabbed from our modded switch earlier using lockpick underscore RCM. Same thing, we have to select our firmware that we grabbed from our modded switch earlier using the switch firmware dumper. Now it wants to know where our games are. So we're going to go into our ROMs folder and we're going to select the switch folder that we created earlier that has all of our games. Go ahead and click continue. You should now see your games start to populate if you did it all correctly but there's a few things we have to do first before launching any games. Head over to settings in the top right and then controls. Go ahead and select player one and you wanna change the controller type to handheld. Now there is two ways you can do this. You can choose auto map a controller and if it recognizes your device, it will try and map the right controls. Or the safer way to do this is to just go one by one for each control and map it to your device. Just tap each button and then tap the corresponding button on your controller or handheld. Home and capture aren't really needed, so you can skip them. Back out and now let's head over to GPU driver manager. If you happen to be using a Snapdragon device, you may have custom drivers available to you and that will help make the games run better, fix issues with graphics and all of that sort of thing. So choose fetch at the bottom left. Eden will now tell you if there's a recommended driver to use. So in this case, with my AYN Odin 2 portal, there is a Mr. Purple turnip driver that it wants us to use. So go ahead and open the Mr. Turnip drivers and then choose whatever the latest is because it matches in the scenario 22 to 22. Click show downloads and then tap the download to start it. Once it's done, Head back and you should now see it as an option on the screen and you can select it if it isn't already selected. GPU drivers are pretty tricky. This is going to confuse a lot of people. The latest is also not always the best, but I would go by whatever Eden says is recommended 
as the choice you should use. There will be some games that will work better on older drivers than newer drivers, so a lot of this can be a per game basis issue as well. We're going to cover what the best settings are per game later on. Back out and now we're almost ready to launch a game. If you push and hold on a game, you can do per game settings. You're going to notice that I haven't really talked about graphic settings or anything like that before now. There's a very good reason for that. With Switch emulation, it is better to just do per game settings for these things, especially for different graphic settings and all of that because usually it only applies to that specific game, so there's no reason to make that change for all games. And so in this menu, we're going to do per game settings. If you head over to info, you can see what version of the game you have and all of the other information. This is good to know if you ever want to update your XCI again using SAK like we did earlier. You can also import or export settings if you happen to find somebody that's sharing their settings somewhere online. You can select a specific GPU driver to use for this game if maybe you found a better one online that works better. And you can also manage your add-ons and DLC or cheats in this other menu. Maybe you found a nice add-on online that changes the game completely. You can do that all here. Now let's look at this as an example. So Link's Awakening, for example, has an issue right out of the box where there is just a ton of blur. You can't even see your character. But there is a no blur mod that you absolutely need to play this game. So if we head over to GameBanana.com, which is hosting this mod, mods all have the same way to install them. So I'm going to show you how to do it here and it'll apply to all games. But in this case, we're going to download the no doff blur zip. Go ahead and extract that zip. And I use an app called Solid Explorer for file management, but there are lots of apps that can do this. And so if we head into that and then into titles, and then you're going to see the title ID, which matches the game. Inside of that, there's a ROM FS folder. So I know at this point that the title ID folder is what we need to add into Eden. And you're going to know why in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and rename this title ID to Nodoff. That makes it easier when we're looking at Eden later to know what this mod is because the name will carry over. So in this scenario, no doff means no blur. Head back to Eden and we're back on the add-ons page. Go ahead and click install, then mods and cheats. And it is going to give you a notice about how to install this. And if you look at it, you're going to realize that we did this already. But it tells you, you need to select a folder that has one of three folders inside of it. So it's the cheats folder, the ROM FS folder, or the XFs folder. And if you remember earlier, the title ID folder that we renamed has a ROM FS folder inside of it. So what we're going to do is navigate to that no DOF folder that we renamed, and we're going to select use that folder. Now, if I go and boot up Zelda, there is no more blur. There are other issues happening here, but at least the blur is gone. You can toggle off and on mods and cheats and all of that as you need on the same page. So just get used to this. It is important to remember that when you are adding a mod, that you are adding the folder that has either ROMFS, cheats, or XFs folder inside of it. So you want to select the folder above those. Now, I said that we're going to talk about per game graphic settings and all of that. And I left it to the end because with Switch emulation, the community is your best resource here. I can't give you the best Eden settings for all games because the best settings for each game differs wildly. Instead, there is a website called muready.com. If you head there and you go ahead and choose browse handheld compatibility, you can click the filter icon. And what you can do is search by game, you can search by system, so Nintendo Switch, for example, or you can search by device. Maybe others have the same device you do and they have specific settings that worked for their device that you can just copy. So let's use an example. I'm going to choose Switch as the system. Then I'm going to be curious about Breath of the Wild, so I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to narrow it a bit further and I'm going to choose the Odin 2 portal because that's the device I'm using. So I'm going to see that there's two options here and I'm just going to pick one of them that has more upvotes because why not? And we can see what settings this person says is the best and also some notes from this person. And so you can get a bit of an idea of what you need to do here. 
And there's also all these graphic settings that this person says is the best to use for Breath of the Wild on this device. And so if we head back to Eden, Breath of the Wild and push and hold, go over to settings to do per game settings. And if we head into graphics, now we can just change our graphic settings to match what this person says is the best and go and test it and see if it is working out well. They also usually list the driver that they used here. And in some cases, you might need to find that driver too. Same way that we did it earlier, you can just go download a different driver and then choose it in the per game settings. But before you do all of this, I would just boot up the game and see if it actually works before trying any of these things out. Because why waste your time if the game actually works and it plays well? Only do this if you're running into issues. And at least you know now, meready.com is where you can go to get support for this sort of thing because they have a big community full of settings and things like that for all these different games. Let's head back to the game list and we're going to pick a game and then boot into it. Now, if you're using three button navigation on Android, if you swipe up and hit the back row, you're going to get the in-game menu. If you're using gestures on Android, use the gesture for back. Or if you're using a handheld that has a back button, you can push that. You have three different ways to get the in-game menu. There is lots of things you can do here, like settings that'll affect all games, per game settings, which is going to adjust settings for this specific game, controls, which maybe you forgot to change it from pro controller to handheld and suddenly let's go Pikachu doesn't let you go anywhere. You can change it here for controls. Then there is overlay options and you can remove the on-screen touch controls here by choosing toggle controls, then toggle all. You can also disable or enable the performance stats and the device info that currently shows up at the top of the screen. This is also where you can exit games when you're done. Otherwise, that's really it, and that's all there is to Switch emulation. The hardest part about this is going to be games that just don't run well, where you need to go and search to find out how to make them run well. But otherwise, there are a lot of games that can run nicely out of the box and pretty easily. If you run into any issues, I will not be the best person to ask. All the information that I have is in today's guide. So hopefully, with what I've given you, you can help figure it out on your own through all of the steps that I've given you. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about handhelds. Support me through YouTube membership if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.